all right all right ladies and gentlemen you are welcome to another great episode on your favorite political talk show the truth with ben jokes now the political scene in nigeria is getting messier and messier the economic scene is even worse most nigerians don't know their rights from left economically anymore and as such the ongoing local government elections recorded very low turnout in many states of the federation the people's zeal and passion for anything concerning the country is lower and weaker than it has ever been and as such results were basically just written in some states because people showed little or no interest so when tinubu was praised for influencing the judges to pass the local government autonomy judgment we were not moved here because the autonomy is not the important thing, but the election of individuals into the offices. Autonomy or no autonomy, nothing good can come out of anywhere. Nothing good can come out of Nigeria once the APC remains in charge. And this is what many of these people have seen that is making them to boycott the elections. And hours ago, thousands of NMPP members in Kaduna State decamped to the Labour Party. The news rocked the Nigerian media space, and just when we were yet pondering on that update, Rabi Musa Kwankwaso, the presidential candidate of the NMPP during the 2023 presidential elections, began saying he is now willing to be Peter Obi's deputy. If you recall, Kwankwaso was the first man Obi approached to be his running mate in the Obi presidential bid, but Kwankwaso refused to be running mate claiming that he is bigger than Peter Obi, but as we speak, he is declaring that he is now willing to be Obi's running mate if certain conditions are met. And many obedience came down heavily on him, saying that they do no longer need his useless services. Before I show you details of these thousands of decampees from NMPP to Labour Party in Kaduna and details of Kwan Kwaso declaring interest in being Obi's running mate, let me quickly show you how Yensom Wiki has once again been disgraced in River State by Governor Sim Fubara. Let's start by watching this video. I also say that it is quite unfortunate that the Nigerian police force led by the Inspector General of Police have used itself to be used by Chief Banisai Sobezebo Wiki, the FCT minister. It's, it's, it's quite unfortunate and uh, Rivers people are watching that he so we can introduce himself to want to even be the president of this country. We have a president for God's sake. We cannot be in Abuja and govern. We can't have two governors in our state. We don't have a governor such as But we voted. We can't have done his tenure for eight years. He has allowed Fubara to do his own tenure. What he's doing is just because this is the structure. He's calling for the structure. We're following the structure from him. This is the structure of Rivers. This is the grassroots. People, Rivers people have rejected Wiki. What they are doing is just protest. Also remember when Atiku and others did protest. He was calling the SUG president, Sudan, you know, today Wiki has led men of integrity on the street of Atakoto to start protesting. So let me say that what goes around comes around. So whatever you do, will come back for you. What Wiki did to Ruth Miyamichi is what is happening to him now. So nobody should be afraid. That is law of karma. You heard that. He said, this is the grassroots. This is where the power is. And that was why Wiki fought tooth and nail to take the local government away from Fubara. But today he has been finally defeated. His hold on River State has been taken away. Initially, the 23 local government chairmen that he wanted to extend their tenure were the ones that he put there. And Fubara refused. Then he wanted to stop the election from holding in River State, the local government elections. Fubara refused, went ahead and held the elections. Then Wiki sponsored 23 different candidates for each of the 23 local governments to run. He said in case they are able you know, to hold the elections, let his own candidates win. He sponsored them under the PDP because he believes that he still controls half of the PDP. So he was trying to bring those guys in you know, to continue to frustrate Fubara from the grassroots. But the elections held and all Wiki's candidates lost. As a matter of fact, the party APP won 22 out of the 23 local government seats in River State. And of course, all those candidates are loyal to Fubara. And as we speak, Fubara is swearing in all 23 newly elected local government chairmen in River State. And Wiki has been put to shame. Look at it. 
Governor Fubara swears in 23 elected Rivers Local Government Chairpersons. Reporters, Rivers State Governor Siminalai Fubara has sworn in the newly elected Council Chairman of the 23 local government areas in a ceremony held at the Executive Council Chamber of the Government House in Port the state capital. This event took place just hours after the chairman received their certificates of return from Adolphus Enebeli, chairman of the River State Independent Electoral Commission. The swearing-in ceremony was the culmination of a local government election that was marked by heightened tension on Saturday. Despite the challenges, the Action People's Party, APP, emerged victorious, securing 22 out of 23 chairmanship positions. Governor Fubara's address to the newly elected chairman emphasized the importance of servant leadership. He urged them to remain humble, stating that the moment you see yourself as a god, the problem begins. Mm. And look at how Nigerians reacted. Let's take some of the tweet reactions. Val here says, congratulations to them. There is no time to waste. Indeed, power belongs to the people, not to Wiki. And MRCFC here says, Fubara 5, Wiki 0. And Frankie says, make that 23-0. That is it. It should be 23-0 actually because Wiki sponsored 23 candidates and they all lost. And MSA here says, good, Wiki has been beaten to the game. If Fubara waited till tomorrow, Wiki will secure an injunction from a corrupt judge to stop the swearing in. That is it. If he had waited, that would have happened and another saga would begin. And this tweet here by Dublin says, very nice. Two parties won. One, 122 local government areas, while the other, one, one LGA. Time to declare public holiday in River State. Fubara, you are a man. Mm. And that marks the end, final end, to some Wiki at the state level i said he was going to be disgraced and the, dis the disgrace has happened several times at the state level and it will continue to happen if he tries anything stupid we are now waiting for the federal level he will be disgraced there i'm telling you very soon the lagos boys are planning to throw him out of office and he's going to be left with his wife and only that his mansion in portacourt politically he will be useless all this started from the day he tampered with obedience votes in River State. The votes that were given to Peter Obi, he tampered them and that became the beginning of his downfall. Now, let us take those massive updates that rocked the Nigerian media space. First, it was news of thousands of people defecting from the NNPP to the Labour Party in Kaduna State. And it appears that the new caretaker chairman appointed by the Labour Party during that uh, convention is beginning to show her capacity in Kaduna State because the caretaker chairman, Senator Nadi Usman, is from Kaduna State. And now thousands are defecting to Labour Party in Kaduna State. And we were just pondering on all these before the update on Rabi Musa Kwankwaso dropped. Rabbi Musa Kwankwaso is now saying that he can be deputy to Peter Obi if certain conditions are met. Let's take details of these updates, starting from the decampees in Kaduna. Look at how the papers reported it. 8,000 NMPP members decamp to Labour Party in Kaduna. Thousands of supporters on Saturday joined Tinok Andrew Nock, a senatorial aspirant, in the 2023 general election as she moved from the new Nigeria People's Party to the Labour Party in Kaduna State. Tinok, the younger sister of former Kaduna State Commissioner of Education, Professor Andrew Nock, expressed her conviction that the Labour Party shares her ideology of honesty and service to the people. She noted, My decision to join the Labour Party is influenced by Senator Nadi Usman, National Caretaker Committee Chairman of the party and promised to leverage her wealth of experience to strengthen the party and contribute to its growth in Kaduna State. Receiving Tinok into the party, Labour Party's 2023 governorship candidate Jonathan Ashake, who represented Senator Nadi Usman, assured that the party is undergoing transition and would harness her expertise 
to become a viable party in the state and the country at large. Tinoch's defection is seen as a significant boost to the Labour Party in Kaduna State ahead of the forthcoming elections. The massive crowd that graced the occasion reflected the enthusiasm and optimism surrounding Tinoch's move to the Labour Party in the state. With this development, political analysts predict a shift in the balance of power in Kaduna State with the Labour Party's growing momentum expected to impact the state's political landscape. Wow, you heard that. Massive defection from the NMPP to the Labour Party in Kaduna State. These are the kind of things that we love to see and more of these defections are going to come and it is so good that this is happening in Northern Nigeria. So the new caretaker chairman of the NWC of the Labour Party, Senator Nadi Usman, is really showing her worth there and we are going to be seeing more of this. We need grassroots impacts like this. I don't care people like Kenneth Okonkwo, Donny Okupe can go around saying all what they want to say. It is not my business. I want supporters at the grassroots because this is the way to grab power. If we are talking about the people coming together to rise against the APC, then we have to take it all from the grassroots. And just as we were yet talking about this update, that one from Rabiu Musa Kwankwaso, the presidential candidate of the NMPP, came up this man is still saying that he's a bigger politician than peter obi he's still making mouth but now he's saying he's ready to be peter obi's deputy oh guy you say you have a phd you say you are a bigger politician that you performed better than peter obi when you were governor why are you still begging to be deputy why but obedience came down heavily on him look at how the papers reported it 2027 elections Kwan Kwaso says he agrees to be Peter Obi's deputy if certain conditions are met. The presidential candidate of the new Nigeria People's Party, NMPP, in the last general elections, Rabi Umusa Kwan Kwaso, has revealed that he is willing to deputize Peter Obi, who was the Labour Party's presidential candidate in the same elections. In a trending video clip on X micro blogging platform, the former governor of Kano State, who spoke in Hausa, said he will be willing to deputize Obi if certain conditions are met. According to Kwan Kwaso, he is politically bigger than Obi. He stated that he and Peter Obi are willing to engage in meaningful discussions with the LP leader to establish an agreement ahead of the 2027 elections. He said, I'm bigger than Peter Obi politically. I'm his elder brother. I'm a PhD holder. I performed better than him when I was governor of my state. I have no problem with being deputy to Peter Obi, but only if certain conditions are met. We are willing to engage in discussions, provided that trust is established. Reporters reported that Kwan Kwaso has been critical of Bola led Nigerian government, accusing it of politicizing the distribution of rice palliatives in Kano State. In a post via X, Kwan Kwaso had alleged that rice meant to be shared by the state government were handed over to APC stalwarts and cronies in the state. He called on Tinubu to stop the derailment of democracy. I call on Tinubu to immediately halt this naked derailment of democracy. You heard that. You are willing to be deputy, but you are still claiming that you are, you, you are bigger than him. You are his elder brother. So the man is swallowing his pride, but the pride is still, you know, halfway around his gullet. The thing has not gone down finally. He's swallowing it gradually. But obedience are not even willing to accept you anymore. And I believe strongly that Peter Obi also does not want you anymore because we have an able, more than able deputy in Yusuf Dati. And look at how obedience reacted to that proclamation from Rabi Omusa Kwankwa. So let's take some of the tweet reactions. This tweet here by MON says, we have moved past this. We prefer Dati now. Mm. And Thinker here says, please, no one wants him. He is extremely disloyal. 
that he has proven loyalty to Peter Obi many times over. It's as simple as that. And Tijani Aliu here says, I don't trust Kwan Kwaso. He is a political prostitute. My advice for Labour Party is to make agreements with PDP. Any other thing is indirectly working for the APC. Well, the PDP will have to put themselves together and then they will come humbly. Because we are the owners of the masses. We are the Labour Party control the common man. So the PDP will put their house together, suspend, we expel Wiki from the party, then come and join us with Peter Obi as the uh, uh, as the flag bearer. And Yoruba obedient here says, Dati or nobody. That is it. Edda here says Peter Obi would likely not be taking him by then. Four years too late. That is it. That ship has sailed for you, Kwankwaso. Go and rest. You are done. And Samuel says, no way. This is a big trap for Peter Obi. Obi is wiser than that. You don't even need to tell him. And Lucas says, after much bragging, Rabbi Ukwankwaso should come down from his high horse. Is he even on any high horse? And Titi Lyle here says, I thought he said he is bigger than Obi. Besides, he is not wanted as Obi's deputy because it is obvious he is going to be destructive as a deputy. If he is bigger as he really claims, he should go alone. It's as simple as that. If you know you are bigger, go alone. You went into an election, you got one point something million votes. You won in only Kano. And you are still coming out to talk. Even in that Kano, you had to steal a lot of votes from Peter Obi. That was what you did. And you are still coming out to say you have PhD. What has PhD got to do in all this? We are talking about a man of substance. A man that has shown over and over again that he has the people at heart, that he knows what to do. How many interviews have you granted, Kwan Kwaso, to even show that you even know what is happening in Nigeria presently? We are talking of a Peter Obi who predicted everything we are seeing now. Talked about oil theft. What aspect of the economy has Obi not shown that he is a master of? Then you come with your, your quack PhD and you are coming to talk. Oh, Nigeria. People who should not even be found in the gates, in the gates of power, let alone the corridor, are coming to talk about being bigger than, than, than juggernauts of the game. Anyway, Kwan Kwaso, just so you know, that ship has sailed. You should consider it an honor that a man like Peter will be once approached you that has corrup corruption charges hanging all over your head. He once approached you. In fact, it's something that we regret ever doing and we will never do that again. So just go and sit down. You can keep jumping from your PDP from to APC, tomorrow to NMPP. That is your own problem. Remain a political prostitute. It is not. We don't care about that. But stop talking about us. We, we are focused on a new Nigeria. Getting a new Nigeria is the goal. And it will work with or without people like you because whether you guys like it or not you guys can continue to do whatever continue to perpetrate whatever evil you are perpetrating in this country power belongs to the people and one day the people will discover themselves and they will come together and take their country back you guys can continue granting all forms of interviews everywhere thinking that nigerians will never wake up you are coming out to say you are bigger than Peter Obi politically because that is everything. That is the only understanding of politics that you people have to be connected to Babangida, to be connected to Yakubu Gawon. Connections. Group of people that are still together. We are looking at achievements. You are saying you perform better than Peter Obi when you were governor of, of Kano State with all the billions of dollars, cases of corruption hanging on your head. It is all thanks to the corruption in our judiciary. If not, you should be resting in jail. You have the F entry to come and spit out this nonsense. Anyway, we don't need you. You are dead politically. And here some wiki is coming to join you. Those are the people we are pushing to that category. El Rufai, here some wiki, Rabi Musa Kwan Kwaso. Anytime you people want to shine, you start talking about Peter Obi. The other day, El Rufai came out and started a rumor that he will form a measure with Peter Obi, God forbid. 
Obi is a clean man and he will remain clean. And Nigerians will eventually all wake up and back him and get him into office. But until then, make I still enter town. <laughs> make I go get some Ogbonge political news. Will not go like. Why? Because now, because of now. Now I day here, so don't go away. Don't go away.